I thought that I needed to have perfect execution every time and in my efforts to maintain something that was completely impossible, I stepped back and realized I wasn't as productive as I needed to be in my doing that. I met another barrier within the mind that was keeping me from my desired outcome. I had to realize that no one is me and that is my superpower, my imperfections, my quirks. The things that make me me are the things that I should rest in have confidence in. In this video, I want to assure you that your authenticity will supersede any trending topic or any niche, but will make you a household name on the platform. I understand that most people don't have that intention, but for the people that do, for the people that want to stand out but don't know how, continue to watch this video. I hope what I share is of service to you. Let's get started. Why do you call yourself a creator? Is digital creation truly your passion? Do you like videography, production? Are you passionate about a specific topic and want to bring community around it? What intrigued me most about wanting to build a platform on YouTube was one, I was going to be able to make my own show as an actress. I wanted to be able to practice being a lead and how can I do that if I don't know how to lead myself into something like building a platform? I wanted to be able to enlarge my territory in a field that is extremely competitive and know what it means to actually have community. But also, I needed to get comfortable as a speaker. I feel like being an artist, being a visual artist, it's so much more about the stories that you're able to tell from someone else's mouth. It's kind of more about your story and how you're able to present yourself. I feel like actors, singers, dancers, whoever, they have a responsibility of being someone that is a powerhouse, someone that is not afraid to take risk, not afraid to truly be their authentic selves while being of service in a way like visual arts is, like acting is. And in order to really realize what that is and understand the importance of that, I needed to kind of put myself out there. So that was my purpose. But I also wanted to experience the freedom that was on the other side of fear of people knowing me and the exhilaration of what I could potentially do after that. It was exhilarating and a little scary for people to see my growth, see my mistakes, see my contradictions and I was just interested in seeing how I was able to navigate through that. If you're someone that is often an introvert, I think a lot of the times it's not that we don't feel comfortable talking to people, we just know how much it genuinely drains us. And also, when I was younger and I've been this way, it was kind of in a way to protect myself. Usually when you are kind of a little bit more reserved in your personality, it doesn't mean that you don't have one. It's just that you're reserving it for the people that you feel most comfortable with. And I was the girl that always was told, I always thought you, that you were bougie or stuck up until I met you and now like you're really cool, but I just don't know. It's just something about you that kind of made me feel like you were standoffish or I couldn't read you. And it's like, after a while, you just start to realize that, you know, I can't allow my fear of other people knowing me keep people from actually knowing me, knowing my greatness and experiencing everything that I have to offer this world. So if you're someone that is a little bit more reserved, you keep more of yourself to yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Continue to do that. But when it's time for you to shine, shine just like the sun. The sun doesn't give a fuck if it burns somebody or not. It's just going to do what it does. And I want more people to do that. Hence why I started this channel. And I will admit, entering the YouTube game with the intentions of being a creator full-time and knowing that as my goal, finally being monetized and reaching that milestone, I felt like it was a dream come true. And it was also a testament that yes, this is possible for me, for anyone, and my journey is living proof that anyone can make this a reality. And after watching so many creators that inspired me, 
that shared their story about their journey and how they felt and how they kept going, I really wanted to be able to be of service and do the same. But you know, I couldn't do it without a really deep dive. I couldn't do it without bringing something else into the pot of conversations. I wanted to make a video that I wish that I heard when I was in the beginning stages and I was trying to figure out like, how does this stuff work? How am I supposed to get out of this feeling like a small fish in a really big pond, the ocean, you know, and still make a way? And in this video, I will talk about how it feels to navigate on this platform that forces a lot of people to conform just to meet the standards of the algorithm, just to want to pop and become this big thing. And oftentimes when you do that, you lose originality, you lose your creativity in the flow of wanting to push out so much content. How can we reach our goal analytically without losing our originality? I think my answer to that is the algorithm is just designed to work for us, not against us. We are the creative force that designed and gave it its function, and it's not only excited for the fresh and exciting things that we can discover and share, but it learns from us in that way. And there's nothing intelligence loves more than new information. So I think it's our job to create with all of our heart and genuinely and create only in ways that pushes the boundaries of discovering for ourselves and expands our artistic deliveries as who we are as human beings. If you've ever taken time to observe who are the creators that are making themselves a slave to the algorithm by chasing the trends or only speaking on the hottest topics of the times, very seldom do they make things that are authentic or feel as raw. And in this year, I think that's more of what we will see. Raw creativity, just raw essence and culture. And my advice to others entering this platform is to play the long game and discover your own style and continuously evolve in that direction. And the best thing about staying in your own lane in that is that there's no one else in your lane but you. You can stay at your own pace. You can grow at your own pace. You can go as fast and as slow as you need to. And I think when people continue to evolve, we bring new topics to the conversation so that we all can, one, enjoy them and also expand within ourselves and grow. So the world is literally waiting for you to exist so much in your authenticity that it gives us a fresh approach to what's happening in the world, to what's happening in our lives, in our minds, and in our creative spaces. So keep going. Being a creator and creating constantly is a challenge and that's why it's such new territory for so many other people. Some people have experienced the burnout and I completely understand it because if your intention is not in the right place as far as like what you actually want out of this, if you're not clear, it could start to feel damaging after a while. It, you slowly start to come away from yourself and then you look back maybe two years in and you realize all of the videos that you created were not you. They were just a representation of an algorithm that you wanted to get in front of or that you wanted to make work for you. And I think if we change our thinking, it'll change the way that we create. And instead of it feeling like a job, for some people it doesn't, and for some people it does, but to get over that hurdle of creating consistently, it'll be so much a part of your outlet or your liberation of self that you'll go towards it instead of slowly walk away from it. So I knew this lifestyle didn't come with ease. But if I put the work in to be myself, and I put the work in to build the trust with the people who align with my messages, I know I am in the makings of building something that just simply can't be bought. And lately I've realized with the fast pace of the algorithm and the influx of new faces that we're seeing pop up and express themselves on platforms, it's amazing. But I wonder, like, how can we 
exist in our originality while still maintaining this fight to stay consistent with an algorithm that we're working with. Sometimes I think we see creators that we like and we notice the patterns that have made them successful and assume that operating in that way will bring us the same success. And I don't think that that is necessarily true. I wanna test the thought process of why you would ever believe that their way would be better than yours. There is more than enough space for you to be your authentic selves here and not feel like you have to be this elevated version of someone else just to exist here or just to show up consistently. That person is already taken, but there is no one exactly like you. And with the space that you have to bring something fresh and new to the table, you have to kind of take it and run with it. There's a creator that I really enjoy and her name is Kelly Stamps and her content is just so fresh and I think she's been so successful because she is just that 1% of individuality that I think a lot of people resonate with because it feels familiar, it feels raw, and it feels genuinely her. And I think that's what I feel most new creators are bringing to the table. Everyone has this time and energy to just do what they're passionate about right but sometimes it does seem like the same thing and i do want to see some originality i hope that i am kind of speaking consciously and giving you a new approach hopefully this is just what makes sense for me and this is also something that i hadn't seen yet i just want to reassure you or i just want you to acknowledge that existing in a version of yourself that is not truly yours it is emotionally, physically, and mentally taxing. Doing this, if this is what you want to become, if this is what you want to do, you're not going to feel empowered to do it every single day, to show up 100%. Some days will feel like 50, some days will feel like 20, but wouldn't it feel better if who you were and what you created was such an authentic space, so rich and raw in who you were, that showing up won't feel so much like a performance, then it will be just you coming home to yourself. In that way, and when other people see it, it will give other people the courage to show up and come home to themselves in the same way, and I think that's what building a community is all about. And I think most people are leaders, most people have the capacity to be real thought leaders and amazing role models to whoever they inspire on a platform. But I don't want to see you lead like someone else. I want to see you lead as you and you give me a fresh and exciting way that I could potentially lead in my own life. Trust me when I say, play the long game. Even if brand partnership and the elevation of this lifestyle is your goal, you will be much more of an asset to any brand and any partnership that you enter when you have an established relationship with your audience and a good rapport with the people who see you and enjoy you. And that's how you find your right crowd. And that's what makes this platform so beneficial and so lucrative. It's because the people that actually care, the people that watch, genuinely watch only because they care. And consistency is key. Now, you know, I say this all the time because it is true. I am living proof that all you have to do is be consistent. Now, what got me in trouble the first time is that I just kind of just showed up. I think my attitude needed to change about how I showed up. I gave myself the bare minimum treatment of like, look, at least I showed up today. I showed up. I did some stuff with my face and I I made a little video and I'm going to post it every week. And then it's like, no, 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 no. This is a privilege. That's something that you get to do, not something that you have to do. So why don't you show up as your best self? You know, like we put so much energy in our day to day lives. And then when we come home and we have to work on our dreams we kind of show up with whatever's left and that's real and that's authentic and i cannot no, no matter how much things that i say there's nothing going to change the way that we feel sometimes in our day to day when we have this thing that we want but we also have a lifestyle and things that we need as far as like essentials and lifestyle things 
I want you to kind of just wake up one day and realize what a privilege it is to actually know your dreams, know where you're headed, enough to put in the effort. The last time I showed up to make this video, I, I, I think a part of me knew that that concealer did not work for me. But did I care enough to wipe it off and do it again? In the moment, no. Because I was tired, genuinely. But sure enough, I had to do it again because that's, that's the fight. It's like, you know what? Every day is not going to be perfect, but you have to pull yourself together to make this thing happen. What if that video that I posted where my I was looking like a clown from The Wizard of Oz? What if that video did crazy numbers and everyone is seeing my face <laughs> probably for the first time that is not a good representation of us of me you know what i'm saying so of course i had to scratch that and deliver with dignity and some respect for the people that watch me for the people that actually know and care you know what i'm saying like and the one thing that I appreciate about like showing up consistently, yes, you want to show up putting your best foot forward, but there are no rules to the game. And that's where it's like this wild, wild west of people just creating things. And I think we're all kind of piggybacking off of each other and just finding new and fresh, exciting ways to speak on different topics, which is great. And I think, honestly, it's a community and that's what we're supposed to do. But for me, in the last video that I created last week, I knew that that was a video of me conforming to speak about a topic that I didn't necessarily feel passionate about. It was just something that I could speak about. And there are going to be some weeks where that's just something that you have to do. And I, I'm only saying this because this is real. It's hard to think about topics. It's hard to just find and figure out something to say. And when you get to a point where you're creating consistently, you're going to get to that point. And you're going to have to do a little bit more research about what you want to say. And that's just really all a part of the game. But sometimes when we enter those spaces and it doesn't feel necessarily right, every video isn't going to feel like the most amazing thing that you've ever created, right? And sometimes when that happens, we assume that this is just not the space for us to exist. Well, if I don't feel like this, then maybe I should stop. And that is not, that's not what it's about. You know, sometimes we do things because we know that even though the passion is not necessarily there 100% of the time, we realize we do it for our future selves. We do it for the days where it's not going to feel like this every single day. I think sometimes we just have to reach a point where we trust our ideas and trust our path enough to show up consistently regardless. Because genuinely, who wants to scroll past 17 videos in the same month of us talking about the same topic? That is conforming and that is what I did in my last video. I didn't trust my ideas enough to speak on this specific topic because I thought that maybe it wouldn't do well. And honestly, who cares if it does, if it doesn't? I think what will ultimately push us forward is us stop doing things that we think will do well and more of us doing things that we are genuinely passionate about and that makes us feel inspired because inspiration isn't something that's going to last. We're not going to always feel like creating. We're not going to always feel like an exciting topic is brewing. But when we do have those little inklings of feelings, we should act on it because you don't know how much it could help someone rid yourself the urge to be trendy or be aesthetic because honestly if you get into the habit of chasing trends now you're going to be doing it for a, a quite a bit and it's not going to feel good once you hit the high of maybe a great video that did well because of a topic you're going to want to chase that high and it just doesn't work that way. And then you're going to start to feel bad about your numbers. And then it's like this cycle of forcing things that you think are going to do well because it's something that's been done before because it was, someone else did it well. And it's like, just do what you want to do. We forget that 
this is supposed to be for us and I want to bring that back into the conversation so we can bring in some freshness, some new ideas, you know? I think bottom line, I'm saying this because I want you to have more than a following. I want you to build an empire, genuinely. I want you to feel seen and be heard and have the people that you create community with resonate with you in a real way so that they support your other future endeavor and endeavors and the things that you want to do don't be afraid of making mistakes don't be afraid of flopping sometimes we have to flop before we fly and in every mistake that i made in every single video it was a resource that i used to make the next video better like I said, sometimes we mistake our trial and errors and the ways that we feel as a sign that we should stop. And that is completely not the case. It's just your mind trying to protect you because that's kind of all it knows how to do. But there are some certain things that we just don't need protection from. We just have to see ourselves through. We have to see what we're capable of in times of just struggle. So make that video, start that podcast, post on Instagram you know make your art with like liberation who cares if someone doesn't get it you know you're existing in what you're supposed to do you're existing in your expression of god which is your creativity your authenticity your joy and um yeah like i i feel like we're all leaders in our own right and in order for us to exist in our leadership, we just have to blaze our own trail. We have to do the things that feel most right for us, even if it feels uncomfortable for everyone else. So I hope this was the video that gets you to that next step of you creating and pushing and doing all of the things that you need to do. It was definitely something that I needed to say, that I needed to do to get myself together because honestly, your girl is tired, but I'm also like, I know there's a little bit more that I could do. There's a little bit more ways that I could express myself. There is always more to do. And I'm just speaking for myself because I know I can show up in better ways and I don't want to get stagnant and I don't, I don't want to get too comfortable because it's just not the time for that. So I hope this video was of service to you. I hope what I said encouraged you to keep going. If you like this video, do not forget to give me a message, comment, subscribe, like, click that notification button if you want to see more videos from me. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day or night wherever you're seeing this, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.